Hello everyone. In uh, today's lecture, we will talk about different ionization methods in uh, mass spectrometry. In earlier lecture about uh, basic principle of mass spectroscopy, we have seen that uh, the first step in a mass spectrometry is ionization of the sample, where a sample is ionized and those ions those are focused into a magnetic field or any other kind of analyzer and their m by z is calculated and eventually those are detected. There are different methods which are employed in order to ionize different type of samples. So we'll, today's lecture we will talk about those five commonly used methods of ionizing analytes uh, in order to be used in mass spectroscopy analysis. There are different methods of ionization and uh, the, the particular method going to be used depends on nature of analyte and of course what type of mass spectrometer is available. So for example, if an uh, analyte sample is volatile in nature, electron ionization or ele electron impact ionization method can be used or chemical ionization can be used. Or if the sample is non-volatile in nature, then fast atom bombardment matrix assisted laser desorption ionization molding or electrospray ionization method can be employed. So in fact, uh, every method has its own advantage and disadvantage. For example, electron impact is used for small volatile compounds and uh, its limitation is that up to one kilodalton mass only can be detected uh, using this method. You can only ionize a sample which is having less than 1000 Dalton molecular weight. It's a hard method and it provides structural information. Hard method means it, it breaks bond. So if you remember the terminology we talked in the previous lecture, the molecular ion peak is fragmented into different daughter ions. So when you use electron impact method, you along with the molecular ion you get many fragmented ions also and that information is utilized to drive the structure of that chemical compound. But you can use it only for less than one kilodalton molecular weight compounds only. Then another method is chemical ionization method, which is also used for small and volatile compounds. Up to one kilodalton molecular weight compounds are ionized using this method. And uh, this method basically protonate ions, molecular ions, in order to ionize them. Then uh, another method is fast atom bombardment method, which is basically used for uh, studying carbohydrates, organometallics, peptides, and non-volatile compounds. And up to six kilodalton molecular weight analytes can be studied using this method. It's a soft method, but still it's uh, hard enough not to be used in uh, proteins and other biomicromolecules. So to study proteins, for example, in case of proteomic analysis or study other large molecular weight compounds, you have electrospray ionization method, which is very soft in nature. It doesn't break bonds, so fragment ions are minimized. There is no fragment ions. Only molecular ion peaks are observed. So this is used for peptide, protein, and other non-volatile compounds. Up to 200 kilodalton mass analytes can be ionized using this method. It's a soft method and it provides multiple charge to the analyte. Then another method which is also soft method and used for study of biomolecules like peptide, protein and nucleotides that's a matrix assisted laser desorption ionization MALDI method. So MALDI is also used but MALDI has advantage that even very high molecule weight up to uh, 500 kilodalton molecular weight compounds can be studied using MALDI and it's also soft method very high mass can be detected can be studied using this method. Now the first method is electron ionization method is widely used technique when mass spectrometer is coupled to a gas chromatography. So for example in case of GCMS this is very commonly used for small organic compounds to study small organic compounds is suitable for volatile organic compounds for example hydrocarbon oils flavors and fragrances this is also called as electron impact ionization method and it produces m plus radical cations which are detetected by a uh, they analyzed in the analyzer and eventually detected 
and the problem with this method because it's very hard method it gives so many daughter ions fragment ions it fragment molecules into small small pieces and those pieces they are all part of the mass spectra so in electron uh, impact ionization method you in uh, in the chamber used for ionization you have filament which is electrically heated and this filament liberate electrons and these electrons when they collide with the samples the sample analyte is coming from here so when uh, these uh, the sample is in gaseous state or vapor state so these electrons when they collide with the sample they are able to knock off electrons from the sample as a result molecular cations are formed and these molecular cations positively charged ions they are then focused uh, for uh, accelerate they are accelerated into analyzer and then detected then another method is chemical ionization method this is also used for soluble non volatile organic compounds is a softer ionization method than electron impact ionization and it produced by protonating or deprotonating analyte it produce charge on the analyte by uh, addition of proton or removal of proton and uh, it used to produce more abundant molecular ions when the molecule under investigation fragments using EI. So EI can give a lot of fragmentation. So to avoid that, uh, chemical ionization method can be uh, used so that fragmentation of molecules or ions that's reduced here. So this, uh, it is very similar to the ionization technique used in electron impact, except a reagent gas is used. For example, methane, isobutane or ammonia. This gas is used uh, uh, when uh, in, in the ionization chamber, otherwise similar to the electron impact ionization method. And uh, ionized reagent gas protonate the sample molecule, leaving a neutral reagent gas species. So it is very similar to electron impact ionization. You have a, a filament which is heated, which, lib which liberate electrons. And uh, additionally, a gas like methane is added here. So methane, when these electrons, they collide with the methane, it produces methane primary ions. Those primary ions, they, uh, they react together and form secondary ions, which eventually protonate analytes to, in order to give them positive charge. For example, methane, meth, meth, CH4, methane is converted to CH4 plus ion by colliding with the electron. Then CH4 plus is further fragmented into NS3, CH3 plus and these CH3 plus and CH4 plus these react with CH4 and give uh, secondary ions. CH4 plus when react with CH4 it produce CH5 plus ion and CH3 and CH3 plus when react with CH4 it produce C2H5 plus ion. So these CH5 plus ion and C2H5 plus ion these react with the analyte to give them charge. For example, CH5 plus react with analyte, the molecule, M is molecule, analyte molecule here. So it, it uh, protonate analyte and form MH plus. And this CH5 plus is converted into uh, CH4 gas. So that's how uh, this compound is a method in chemical ionization method by protonation analyte become positively charged. And these positively charged ions then they are focused into analyzer for further study in a mass spectrometer. Then uh, the third method is fast atom bombardment method. It is used for large compound with low volatility. For example, peptides or proteins or carbohydrates. When you want to make fragmentation of proteins and peptides, for example, in case of tandem mass spectroscopy, you can use the fast atom bombardment method. Solid or liquid sample is mixed with the non-volatile matrix. So in this method, the non-volatile matrix is mi mixed with a uh, matrix chemical, for example, such as glycerol, crown ethers or nitrobenzyl alcohol. And this immobilized matrix is bombarded with fast beam of argon or xenon atoms. So inert gas is used here to bombard this matrix and sample mixture. So as a result, charged sample ions are ejected from the matrix and they are extracted into the mass analyzer which are focused for analysis later on so here you use a matrix which basically uh, protect 
analytes from fragmentation and also help in ionizing the sample. Then uh, another method is electrospray ionization method. This method is used for uh, large molecules where fragmentation is avoided. It is a very soft method in comparison to the method known so far, studied so far. And uh, the transfer of ionic species from solution into the gas phase by ESI involve three steps. In the first step, dispersal of a fine spray of charged droplet, which is followed by solvent evaporation and then the ions are ejected from the highly charged droplets. So for this purpose, you use a stainless steel micro capillary. The tip of the capillary is kept at high voltage from 2 to 4 kilovolt and the sample to be ionized is injected into this capillary uh, using a flow rate of 1 to 1000 microliter per minute speed. So because the tip is at uh, high high voltage, so the sample coming out from this capillary, it is basically is a mist of highly charged droplets with the same polarity as the capillary voltage is generated. And uh, these, these mist, these, these aggregated droplets, charged droplets, these are uh, basically dehydrated. The solvent or evaporation is done using nitrogen gas, heated nitrogen gas. So when solvent is removed from these droplet, the size of droplet reduces. As a result, these molecular ions, they come too close and they try to repel each other. As a result of repulsion, these uh, ionic species, the analyte, charged analyte is ejected out into the gaseous state, which is further focused in the mass analyzer. So here you use nitrogen gas as a nebulizing gas also, which carries, which carry these uh, molecules of analyte into the forward direction. So it's a very soft method and mostly in proteomic studies ESI method is used for ionizing the sample. Up to 200 kilodalton molecules can be studied using ESI. Then the last method is matrix assisted laser desorption ionization MALDI method. MALDI is also employed for proteomic studies and it has advantage of uh, very, uh, I mean, uh, using very high molecular weight analytes. It's, it's capable of giving charge to the high molecule weight up to 500 kilodalton analytes can be charged using this method. And uh, this methodology is a three-step process. In first step, the sample is mixed with uh, a matrix. Matrix is a chemical compound. So uh, excess of matrix is used here. In fact, saturated solution of matrix is used, which is loaded into a multi-well uh, stainless steel plate. So in each well, the sample plus saturated matrix solution is added, which is dried. After drying, this uh, analyte and matrix crystallizes. And these crystals of uh, matrix and analyte it is bombarded with the laser beam. In fact, here uh, the matrix is used uh, uh, 100,000 times or even saturated solution of matrix is used. So matrix is always in a very high concentration in comparison to the analyte. So when laser beam is bombarded on the, this uh, crystals of matrix and analyte mixture, desorption occurs. These matrix molecule along with the analyte, they fly off from the solid surface. And uh, these matrix molecules are the one which basically absorb, because these are aromatic compounds, the matrix molecules, they absorb the radiation from laser beam and get excited. And during this uh, disruption process, they transfer charge, proton, to the analyte. As a result, this analyte become positively charged. So it can, in fact, uh, protonation or deprotonation, it can ionize in both ways. So that's how this, this matrix molecule help in transferring charge to the analyte. So analyte become positively charged and this positively charged analyte is further analyzed into analyzer. Different type of matrix are used in MALDI. For example, nicotinic acid, caffeic acid, synapinic acid or alpha cyanohydroxycinamic acid. So the purpose of the matrix, the function of the matrix is to dilute and isolate analyte molecule from each other. 
so the aggregation of analyte does not occur analyte become individual they are separated from one another molecules so upon laser irradiation it also function as mediator of energy absorption so it absorb energy from the laser beam and that transfer charge um, uh, from analyte molecule for, to the analyte molecule so analyte become charged and in general highly polar analyte work better with highly polar matrices and non polar analytes are preferably combined with non polar matrices so depending on the nature of the sample to be studied a, ma a matrix proper matrix is selected and is crystallized with the analyte before irradiating with the laser beam so that it can be ionized